Hey team, this is Grant David Collins and welcome to Basement Philanthropy, a place for people who do not want to wait until they're rich or retired to create meaning, impact, and connection with their money, regardless of the amount. On this Valentine's Day, we're going to be talking about what love has to do with philanthropy. So let's get started. When I was between the ages of 18 and 20, I served as a missionary for my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And during this time, I left my family to go and live a life of service and teaching and development. And so over those two years, I gained a lot of experience that has helped me in the work that I'm doing right now with Basement Philanthropy. And while I was on this mission, I had a lot of experiences that helped me in the work that I'm doing here at Basement Philanthropy. But one of them that sticks out the most has to do with what we're talking about today, which is love and philanthropy. So just like anything in life, there are ups and downs in missionary work. And I remember one particular day that I had a pretty big down and the experience that followed that. Uh, The person that I was working with on my mission and I uh, had a big full day of service and teaching and and things planned. And it was something that we were really excited about. It takes a lot of work to be able to set up those types of opportunities. And so we dove into the day with this uh, sense of excitement and possibility. And by nine o'clock that evening, basically everything that we had planned for the day had fallen through, and it just really didn't amount to what I had thought that it would. And so I remember driving home late at night in a 2013 Chevy Colorado, and I'm sitting in the passenger seat as we pull up to one of the big intersections in Oklahoma City. And we're turning left, and so I'm surrounded by cars. And on the radio, there is a song that starts to play uh, by a Christian artist by the name of Brandon Heath. And this song is called As Long As I'm Here. And the first couple lines of that song are, Someday I'll pass to the great wide beyond. And the first thing he'll ask is how well did I love? Did I leave the world any better than it was before? Of all the things I've done, could I have done anymore. So regardless of what religion you subscribe to, or even if you are not religious, if you're listening to this podcast, you likely believe in something bigger than yourself. And in that moment, I looked around me and saw to my right, a random stranger. And to this day, I really have no idea who this person is, what they looked like, their race, gender, you know, whatever. Um, But what I do remember is this feeling of love from what I would call a higher power. And it was so deep and so full that for the rest of my time in Oklahoma, it really changed everything that I did on a day-to-day basis. On top of that, when I got home, this feeling of being a part of something bigger and and living a life that was outside of my own uh, just kept on staying with me. And that is the power of love. If you've ever been in love, if you've ever been loved, you know that it is this thing that moves you. It's this thing that you think about in the morning or in the evening or at random times during the day. There's little tiny experiences that show you that love is there or there's big exciting experiences or there are experiences that are really challenging and hard. But this feeling of love moves us to do things. And in that moment, I realized what it would be to live a life that included other people in that journey as I am living whatever amount of years that I get here on this beautiful planet Earth. 
So that experience not only taught me what it was like to love somebody that I didn't even know, but it also taught me what it looks like to have love in my heart when I'm going about doing good in this world. We live in a really selfish environment, and it's quite often that we think of ourselves in any given scenario. You can think of work experiences or experiences at home or with your friends. And as you review those experiences, you might have the same realization that I do that, you know, it's really easy to think of ourselves and a little bit challenging to look outside. But as we look outside, there is this feeling of joy and fulfillment that comes into our lives that is backed by social science and psychology that provides this meaning and happiness that can really come no other way. And so as we are here together on Valentine's Day, whether you are single, married, what, whatever your relationship status is, uh, what I want you to know is that I love you. Now, that might sound a little cheesy. It might sound like, wow, Grant, that's insincere. There's no way that you even know me. And what I'll say is that like, it, it doesn't matter because I believe in something bigger than just like a relationship that goes one-to-one. And it really is a moving concept when you can start to think of people in that way. Many of you know about the crisis that is happening in in Turkey and Syria right now, where there are thousands and thousands of people that have been affected and displaced by this huge earthquake. And if you can look past the numbers and the heart-wrenching pictures and start to understand that the people that the news anchors are talking about are real and they have lives and families and hopes and dreams and and things that they care about and their entire world has just been exploded then you can start to find it within yourself to move and do something about the world around you and see yourself as somebody that matters because you yourself have been impacted by love so we often think of love in this context of romantic love And I want to spend a tiny bit of time, a little bit of a tangent today, talking about some of the findings around romantic love, philanthropy, and service. And it's really interesting as you start to do research on love and philanthropy, what comes up. So for example, one of the sections of an article that I read was called, Is Volunteering the New Match.com? And this is what it says. The survey that we put out finds that more than 80% of those who have volunteered in the past year would be more willing to date a person they meet volunteering than through an online dating site. In addition, 84% of unmarried respondents report being more comfortable going on a date with a fellow volunteer rather than being set up on a blind date by a friend or relative. Research shows that special bonds often develop when volunteering with others. In fact, more than half of those volunteers report making a new friend while doing good. Lending a helping hand can even help your love life with 10% saying that volunteering led to romantic relationships and of those, 6% ended up walking down the aisles in marriage. Now, I haven't had that happen in my life yet as far as walking down the aisles of marriage, but from my personal experience, as I have gotten involved with the community and with people that are volunteering and helping, that is where I have found some of the closest friends that I have. And so if you are a little bit low on love, whether it be from a romantic standpoint or just uh, an interaction and community standpoint, an incredible place to get some of that love back is by getting involved with your community, whether it's by donating money, time, talents, whatever that is. That is what this article is talking about. And maybe if you're lucky, you'll find Mr. or Mrs. Wright. And it's really not just single people or those who are looking for their love uh, that, that experience the benefits of volunteering and service in creating and building these types of connective relationships. Uh, In the book, 
The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, he talks about one of the primary ways that we as human beings feel love is through things called acts of service. And the funny thing about books is that sometimes they're written and then after they come out for a little bit, research backs up what they are saying. And as I walked through this episode, I found article and article um, uh, talking about how these five love languages have actually started to make an impact in a lot of people's romantic lives. And you likely have experienced this in one form or another, even if acts of service is not your thing. When somebody takes time out of their schedule to do something for you or uh, to cook you dinner or to uh, grab you something from the store, there's just this added element that comes into that experience that is is different. It's it's loving. It, it, it fills you a little bit more. I think a great example of this are the salads that my mom makes when I am home eating dinner. Now, salad is something that is super easy to make. Like you just have simple ingredients. You cut up, you don't have to cook anything. Like you barely have to wash things. And I will tell you that I love, I love, love the salad that my mom makes more than anything on this planet as far as food and side dishes are concerned. And I have attempted to create that same salad and I can never create it like she does because I know the secret ingredient, which is just this care and this love that she has and she puts into everything that she does that surrounds me. So this Valentine's Day, as you are thinking about the people in your life that you would like to show love to, alongside the chocolates and the roses and and the sweet cards, I would just think about adding maybe an act of service or kindness to that arrangement of things that you are doing for the people in your life that you love. And it doesn't just have to be people that you're involved with romantically. Uh, There is a member of our community, the Basement Philanthropy community, um, who has been on this podcast before, uh, Laurel Farrer. And I was talking with her the other day and she shared what she is doing this month for her micro philanthropy project. And it's it's pretty dang inspiring. So I want to play you a little clip of her talking about what she is doing this February, and then we'll just chat about it after. I also remembered you asked me what I um, had I'm doing for my philanthropy right now, and conveniently, I just got done with it uh, just a few minutes ago. I uh, this month I'm ordering flower arrangements for single moms and widows. So, you know, they don't have Valentines to take care of them. And and that's a bummer, especially when you've had a Valentine before and to not have a Valentine later is pretty crappy. So uh, I did it for just a couple of people last year and it was just so sweet and beautiful um, to see their reactions and, and realized that I knew it would be meaningful. I didn't realize how tender and meaningful it would be. So I um, made sure that my whole budget this month is going towards sending those. Anyone can do what Laurel is saying. Like this is such a reachable way of giving and connecting during what can be a really challenging day for people. And just like Christmas, Valentine's can be a catalyst for us to be able to show people love in our lives. And so if you're listening to this podcast outside of the day of love, what I would just invite you to do is to do this same activity. Like flowers are not reserved for February 14th. And there are so many people in your life that could use that type of acknowledgement and love. And so don't just waste it because it isn't a formal holiday. As we close, I just want to say one more time that I have a lot of love in my heart for those of you who are listening to this podcast. Uh, The beautiful thing about love is that not only is it something that we can fill in personal relationships, but from my experience, it's something that, that grows and builds as we are involved with things and causes that we love. 
And as you have listened to this podcast, I have felt that love grow on my end. And so I just want to take this opportunity and say thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing to this podcast. I am thrilled for the next couple months here at Basement Philanthropy. There's a lot of incredible things that are going to be happening and you'll be along for the ride. Well, team, that's it for me. Let's go out into the world and create good with the money in our pockets and the love in our hearts together. Talk soon.